Hi everyone, this is Julianne Victoria of Through the Peacock Size. Welcome to my channel. So this video, this vlog discussion video is another video response video. I always feel weird saying that. A VR to Diane at Indigo Moon Woman. And she posted a video today. Um, what was it called? Why I Say God. So with a capital G. And immediately I was like, oh, I need to do a video, a VR for that um, because it touches on other things I've been wanting to talk about. So I'm going to include that in this video. It might be sort of a long video. <laughs> we'll see how it turns out. Um, so just to answer that question, why I say God, why I have no problem using the word God with a capital G, where a lot of people, especially tarot card readers, astrologers, people in the esoteric, metaphysical, even witchy community, don't like to use that word God. <laughs> um, I never had a bad connotation with it. I never had a upbringing where there is a God with a big white beard who looks like Zeus or Jupiter sitting on a cloud judging every little thing I do. And I know that is a part of certain Christian and other religious groups. Um, but as some of you know, I went to Catholic school as a child and I made a video, I don't know, last summer or fall. Um, basically it was titled like, what am I? Christian, Buddhist, whatever. I'll link that on screen if you want to check it out. So this is also an extension of that video. Um, but to give you some more of my background, I went to Catholic school from kindergarten through eighth grade. Um, I wouldn't say we were Catholic at home. Um, though my dad was very religious, spiritual, but he was Presbyterian. His father was Lutheran. Um, so I guess there was, a, you know, a general Christian theme to the family, but it wasn't, there wasn't this, this feeling of like, you must be good or you're bad. You had to do this to go to heaven. You do these things, you're going to hell. There wasn't this sort of intense judgment upon us. It's, it, it was just you know, be a good person, follow the teachings of Jesus, um, you know, do unto others as you, as you would have them do unto you. Love your neighbor as you would love yourself. Now, now I would say there's a little bit of a caveat there. If you don't love yourself, you're not going to love your neighbors. If you do, if you don't treat yourself well, if you don't love yourself, if you don't do unto yourself the teaching of love and kindness that Jesus taught, you're not going to do that unto others. So a lot of this depends on your psychological state, where you are emotionally with yourself. Do you practice self-love? Doesn't mean you're perfect every day. Do you care about yourself? Do you take care of yourself? Do you respect yourself? You're gonna care and respect other people. If you hate yourself, if you're down on yourself, if you're critical to yourself, you're probably gonna be that to other people. So, I mean, this is something to think about. Does how you treat other people reflect how you treat yourself? In most cases, I think it will. And that should be sort of an opening, an eye opener to like, hey, I need to treat others better, but I myself is someone who, whom I need to treat better. Okay. I feel like I went a bit off on a tangent there. So why I say God? I'm not uncomfortable using the term God. Again, I don't see God as a large man in a robe with a big white beard up there, like checking off the list, almost like Santa Claus, a large man with a big white beard on the naughty and nice list. God to me is the all that is with a capital A. The all that is, is one, is the universe. And, you know, many of you know, I've studied languages academically. I'm a historical linguist. Um, it's been many years, though, but I still try to, like, do a little bit with language here and there just because I like it. And in German, der all means the universe. It is the everything. It is the one that is everything. And so that is what God is to me. God is the universe. So when I do like my weekly readings or my new and full moon readings, you know, I usually, you know, when I'm shuffling the cards, you know, I say, what advice, what advice or guidance does God spirit the universe? And I say it that way to, to make it easy for other people to connect. 
You know, if you don't like the word God because of your upbringing or background, you can connect to spirit, the one spirit, the spirit that is. You could say the Holy Spirit or the universe. To me, it's all the same thing. It is God. And so, yeah, I have no problem using God because it represents everything that is and that is for everyone. And I often think of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, creator of heaven and earth, heaven meaning the universe, of all that is seen and unseen. And if you think about that, okay, God is everything that is. God is what we consider on this planet earth, in this realm of duality, what is good and bad. God created light and dark. God created beautiful things and ugly things. Everything is the creation of God, the power or the force. And in Di Diane's video, she mentioned like in Star Wars, you know, how someone mentioned to her, oh, your, your, um, your concept of God is like the force in Star Wars. Yeah, it's the force. It's that power, that creative energy of all that is. And, you know, God is considered, at least in Catholic religion, and I would guess in many or most major religions across the world, possibly using different terms, sometimes it just comes down to semantics, that God is omnipotent, all-powerful, not all-powerful as in I'm going to strike you down with a lightning bolt if you do this and send you to hell, but all-powerful as in the force, <laughs> the power, the creative power that is everything. So God is omnipotent. God is omniscient, all-knowing. Again, not that there's a man sitting on a cloud knowing every little detail of your life and judging every little bit, but all-knowing as in the knowledge, the wisdom of the all, their all, of all that is of the oneness of everything. And that, looking at it that way, seeing sort of that bigger picture of it all, you can then see that, you know, there is that concept of the interconnectedness of everything. So God is omnipotent. God is omniscient. Again, you have to sort of take away the anthropomorphism that humans often need to conceptualize spiritual things. And it's okay to do that, but understand that that anthropomorphism, so transforming it in our minds into a human figure, a human concept, is not the true reality, but our way of understanding part of the true reality of what God is, the all, the oneness. Um, I lost track there. So God is omnipotent, God is omniscient, and God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. God is in everyone and everything, animate and inanimate, of all that is seen and unseen. So everything is God. And so that is why I use the term God, because to me it means everything. I don't have any negative connotation to the use of God. I will often use the pronoun he to refer to God, but it's not a man versus a woman. It's not only masculine energy versus feminine energy. It is the all. It is everything. Okay, I wrote some more notes here. Um, omnipotent, omniscient, creative, all that is seen and unseen. Oh, so I wanted this to kind of segue into something I've wanted to talk about, like what does it mean to be Christian? Because um, this has come up a lot, um, more in my personal life um, and in my own ponderings. Now I want to backtrack <laughs> to my Catholic upbringing or my Catholic school education, which to me I feel was a beautiful, I don't have a negative Catholic experience. It was a beautiful foundation experience for my spiritual life. I'm very thankful for it. Um, you know, even in religion class, we would discuss things like, oh, you know, some people believe this, some people take the Old Testament seriously, some people don't. You know, it's very open and understanding and clear that we don't we don't know everything we don't know exactly what in the bible is literal and what is not you know that's up to personal interpretation that's up to our spiritual paths so there wasn't so um 
what's the word? Um, literal, strict. We discuss things. But going back to what does it mean to be Christian? I feel like I'm going off track in many places here. I had coffee this morning, so <laughs> forgive me for being like bouncy. I feel that way. Um, so when I went through confirmation, so confirmation in the Catholic tradition, um, at least, you know, where I went to school. So I grew up in San Francisco, California, which might be part why it wasn't so what I call medieval Catholicism, where it's like, you're going to hell if you don't do this and you must fast on Fridays and you have to do this and you have to check all these things off your list and earn your brownie points to get to heaven. There was none of that for me. Um, anyway, we go through the sacrament of confirmation. So there are the seven sacraments. Um, that happens when you're in seventh or eighth grade. Um, and that is a, that is a, a ritual of initiation. So rituals of initiation across cultures um, especially in shamanic traditions or the shamanic aspects of different religions. And I do believe there's a shamanic aspect to Catholicism, to all religions. Um, you take on a new name. And so when you go through confirmation, you pick a new name. And this is going to be like, this will clarify, hopefully for you, what it means to be Christian. Um, I chose the name Gabriella Christina. Gabriel or Gabriel means God is my strength. And Christina represents the teachings of Jesus Christ, right? Christina means of Christ or Christian, right? Um, and to me, why I chose that, why I chose two names, normally you pick one. I chose two because God was my strength. God, that all encompassing energy of all that is, that was before everything else, that is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. And it's a cycle. There is no end and poof, everything's gone forever. I mean, this is beyond our, our brain's capacity, I think. Sometimes it, it hurts my brain, but a new cycle will begin. But anyway, going back to my confirmation name, I chose those two names because it's important for me, one, to acknowledge that God is my strength because there were times in my childhood when that's the only person whom I felt was there for me. And still, and also Christina, because it represents what Jesus taught, which is love, compassion, kindness, acceptance, non-judging other people for who they are. He didn't stone the prostitute. He didn't, you know, tell people go out and kill in my name he said love them and, and respect them love your neighbors as you would love yourself again assuming you love yourself do unto others as you would have them do unto you again there's sort of a <laughs> hopefully you do well unto you you know and he taught you know if you look at the septuagint which is the the greek you know not, not many people are going to be able to read the greek new testament but i've read many years ago, large portions of it in the Greek. And I feel like if you go back to older versions, you get more of the original message, never probably totally the original. They weren't written by Jesus himself, right? Much of it is channeled later on. But Jesus taught in Greek, caritas, which means, you know, we, but that's where we get the word charity. So not just giving to others, but being kind and generous. In a sense, it also means love, being compassionate to those in need, whether it's financial need, emotional need, spiritual need, to your best ability. And agape, which is another Greek word for love, like brotherly love. Basically, be kind to others. Kindness is what it means to be Christian. Not judging other people, not wanting them to live a certain way, not you know, telling them they're going to go to heaven or hell or fretting over that, that's not your business. That's up to God. That's up to the all that is. And the all that is within each and every one of us. Okay, I'm hoping that makes sense. So just looking, was there anything else I wanted to say here? My notes end up looking like this. Oh, I also wrote... So the first line in 
the Christian Bible in Greek, an arche hologas, an arche in the beginning, hologas, logic. So that's where we get our word logic. Often it's translated in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. But logos means so much more. You know, in the beginning was vibration sound. What is word? It's a vibration. It's a sound. In the beginning was a vibration. In the beginning, you could say, if you want to, you know, anthropomorphize God. God said a word. And once you give something a word, a label, it can then come into form out of the formless. Logos also means logic, common sense. Things make sense. Not just in like a mathematical analytical way. And of course there is, you know, if you, you want to really get into things, you know, the math that is the universe, right? And then you can go into quantum physics and all that. Um, but things make sense, even intangible things like emotions, intuition. To me, intuition is very logical. It's not analytical that and that we overthink it, but it's like, I feel that, you know, I mean, you have to get to know it for yourself. But for me, it's like, okay, I feel this in my body when I'm, you know, doing this reading. What does that mean? It's logical. It's not like, Oh, I feel this sense of panic for no reason. Intuition isn't illogical. The challenge is trusting it. But there is a logic. There is a, a sense that is made to it. An archeologos. In the beginning was logic. Was Logos is the best way to actually translate it. Was the vibration. Was the sound. Was the... You can even say the cause and effect of the three-dimensional world, I'm not talking about other dimensions, of how things came into form out of the formless that is God. The all is formless. It creates form. All form is of God, is God's creation. Through all of that, form started to create. Things started to manifest. God created earth. God asked earth, this is in the Bible, God asked earth to bring forth life. He created earth and earth, Gaia, created life. It, it all flows from that. An archeologos. Okay. I think that's all I want to say there. <laughs> I don't know if this is even making sense because I do feel like I'm a bit off tangents. Ah. <sighs> caffeine excitement, but I was really excited to make this video. So why I say God, I have no problem with God. I've had people ask me, do I believe in God? And it's not a belief. It's like, I know God. I know God is in everything. I feel God in me. I see God in action. God is everywhere. And so I feel I have no need to believe because believe is a thought in many languages, at least in Indo-European languages, you know, the like in Latin, the word credo means to think, but also means to believe. I think I believe. And I remember when I study languages, it's like, oh yeah, a lot of words that mean to think also mean to believe. And there's, what's the saying? A, a belief is a thought you keep thinking, which is very too, true. You keep thinking something, you believe it. Whether you want to believe it or you're trying to convince yourself to believe something. But knowing is a different thing. So, yeah, I know God. Doesn't mean I know everything about the universe. No, not at all. But I know, it's a trusting a trusting, you could say a faith, having faith, trusting, the knowing that God's goodness, and it's all good. We separate things into good and bad, but in the grand scale of things, it's all good. It's God creating. It's God knowing himself or herself, if you want to use that. It's God being. You know, in the Bible, when God's talking to Moses, Moses channeling God through a burning bush. 
I am who am. Or you can even say, I am what is. I am being and being is. It is formless. God is not tangible. He is what is. Okay. So that is why I say God. <laughs> Along what feels like a very long ramble. Segwaying into what it means to be Christian. And anyone can be Christian. You don't have to follow a specific Christian religion. But if you're someone who practices kindness and generos generosity and you work towards loving others as you are working to love yourself, you are being a Christian. Just like practicing compassion means you are practicing Buddhism. But com kindness, compassion, love, you know, to me, because I've studied many religions, not all completely, perfectly, but if you take away the cultural, the political, the stuff relevant to the time the text was written, you break it down to its basics, they're all teaching us the same thing, to be kind, to be loving, to be generous, you could say even be charitable, to be compassionate, to see the interconnectedness of everything, that God is in everything, that we are all one, one in the same of the one that is all, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, yeah. And specific religions, you know, some people need that group. Some people are more drawn to group connection. Sometimes religions, or certain groups, certain temple communities, church communities, lose the spiritual aspect and get too caught up in the realm of duality, you can say. But go with what, what works for you. Just practice kindness, practice love, practice compassion, and it begins with you because you are a child of God too. Okay, I think I'm gonna leave that there. Hopefully this wasn't too much of a ramble, but Diane's video like excited me, fired me up, fueled by coffee today <laughs> um, to really talk about this discussion because I think it needs to be talked about. I've, I've spoken to, I've heard about, I've experienced from so many people who have this dislike for the word God or just God. And it has to do with their upbringing. And it takes time to work with that. And you can use a different term. You can use a different image in your head. Anthropomorphize God, keep it ab abstract. But it shouldn't be hated or feared. Love God. Whatever term, whatever form you want to picture God in. Okay. Yeah, I'll stop it here. <laughs> it's not the third time I've said that. All right, everyone. Thank you for listening in. Thank you for watching, liking, share this with someone who might be inspired by it, who might be helped by it. Um, that's why I do these videos. Um, subscribe if you're interested in more and I'll see you back here soon.